we're all on that same journey. So if anybody tells you they know what's going on or where it's going, they're lying. We don't. It's all new. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's the fastest adoption of any technology in all human history. So the internet was previously the fastest adoption of any technology. This is growing at twice the speed. So currently there's 300 million users of crypto worldwide. It's growing at 185% a year. So that means by next year, you're at 700 million people. And then the year after that, you're at a billion and a half people. So what's amazing about it is, yes, it's amazing the technology and Web3 and all of the power it gives back to the individuals and all of the great stuff. But the big difference here is by owning the tokens, you're being part of the network as well. So you, you can not only get the benefits of this new system in a social sense, but you get it in an economic sense too, because it goes up in value. It's like it's like finding Facebook back in 2010 and being given shares in Facebook that everybody who used Facebook had shares. It would have made everybody rich. Bitcoin and Ethereum are trending downwards in price while fear surrounding the global macroeconomic environment escalates. It seems that these losses could accelerate as both cryptocurrencies appear to breach vital demand zones. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Raul Paul updates about the latest happenings in Bitcoin and Ethereum space, increasing adoption of cryptocurrencies, the future of Web3, smart contracts, and NFTs. Make sure to stick around till the end of this video where Raul shares his views on the future of digital assets. Let's dive right into the video. Yeah, so Bitcoin is still the big daddy of the space, mm-hmm. and it, it's the OG. Uh, it was the first one to launch. Now, Bitcoin has some very unique attributes, which is that it is you know got this very restricted, understandable, knowable, non-changeable supply. Mm-hmm. So you know how many Bitcoin are going to come onto the market every year, and when that stops, when we get to twenty-one million. Mm-hmm. It's also the way it's constructed is is um, a proof of work mechanism, which means that there's lots of computers around the world, Bitcoin miners they're called, who have to solve this complicated algorithm, and it's expensive. You need huge computing power, and that network of miners basically protects the network. So there's not a single person that validates everything. It's all of these people. So Bitcoin is incredibly secure and robust. So for a system of money, meaning for savings or collateral or things you borrow and lend against, it's amazing because it's it's so understandable, knowable, definable. It is slow because it requires all of this computing power and expensive to do things on. So it has not been used as the kind of applications layer. It's kind of the base layer of the money system, the new digital money system. Ethereum comes along and it does something uniquely different. It has, it's, it didn't set out to be money. Well, Bitcoin set out to be money in some respects. It set out to be an applications layer, a platform of which we could build on blockchain technology. And its piece of magic was something called the smart contract. So Bitcoin, there is no nothing smart in it. In fact, it's pretty dumb. It just does what it does, which is why it's so perfect. But Ethereum said, well, if we can make contracts code, then almost anything in life is a contract. Me coming on your podcast is essentially a verbal or written contract over email, right? Almost everything in life is a contract. So therefore, if we can record all of these contracts and make them transferable in this new world, then we've created the whole applications layer for money, the internet of value and everything else. So Bitcoin is more single use case specific, but very powerful in what it does. Ethereum is like the whole internet. So it's a much broader thing. And so that, so they, they're very different and people try and compare them and say, you know, well, one's not the other and they're not supposed to be. They're both amazing in their own way. Roughly $110 billion has been wiped out of the cryptocurrency market over the weekend, putting both Bitcoin and Ethereum in a tight spot. The number one cryptocurrency has taken a 15.5% nosedive over the past four days. As the selling pressure appears to be accelerating, Bitcoin could be bound for further losses. 
From a technical perspective, Bitcoin has sliced through the lower boundary of a parallel channel on its daily chart. Such market behavior anticipates a steep correction as significant as the pattern's width, which projects a target between $29,620 and $28,060. But when you looked at two things, they were the only things that made the real difference. One was technology stocks, because we live in this technological age of incredible change. And so those things tend to do well. But the thing that beat them all was crypto. Crypto did extraordinarily well, because what you've got is some forces at play. One is this digital scarcity, so you can't print more of it. So if something is being printed more of, it goes up in value versus a thing being printed. So that's great. But the blockchain technology was like a call option on the future financial system and the future of the internet. So you've got something that looks like a tech stock with adoption and has the safety of, let's say, gold. So that became like the holy grail. And then, you know, the speed of adoption, everything else is what's driven the price rises. So that's why crypto has been such a good savings vehicle. I made a, um, a video on this several years ago that's probably had three or four million views now on YouTube um, about the retirement crisis. And back then, I probably did this in 2015 or so. I said, you know, if you are a 30-year-old, your answer is to start saving in crypto because that is the big opportunity because the upside is so much larger. So yeah, that's the only way I see it that you can get ahead. Or start your own business is the other way. Ethereum has also seen its price drop by more than 15.5% over the past four days, losing over 500 points in market value. A breach of the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level at $2,150 could be the first sign of confirmation for the bearish outlook. Then Ethereum could hover around $1,720 before capitulation near the $900 level. As with every contract that you have, is do you trust that person? Right? Who was behind the Squid Games thing? No, we, you know, you didn't know. You didn't have a relationship. So people were just looking, oh, this looks like a cool idea. I'm going to throw money at it. Difference is, if you say, I'm going to create a series of 1,000 NFTs for my true fans, and I'm going to give them to you, and those first 1,000 true fans, anybody who owns that NFT is going to get a bunch of stuff. You know, I'm going to have meet and greets. I'm going to release some special content. I'm going to you know, have you know, Zoom calls with you. Okay, now those things have value. You've not monetized anything. You've given it to people. Okay, that's a first good start. Okay. Because you can monetize later. Because then once you've got these true fans, the NFTs now have value. Maybe other people want to join the community. So maybe you say, well, the actual size of this is 10,000, but I've given them the first thousand out. Now suddenly the market will set a price because people will want, if you, if you prove that you're going to add value to the community, then then those NFTs will have a value. And suddenly, before you know it, they're trading at $1,000. So now you can sell more of the NFTs to give other people access. But again, you have to keep proving that you're adding value, that it's not just an idea. Or like a money it's grab. That, no, it needs to be a utility that we're in this together. We're trying to build something between community member and influencer or artist. Once you do that, once you see that, you know it's genuine. Does it mean it's going to work? No. You know, it, it depends whether the community grows and the benefits are good and it catches on. Enough people hear about it. Yeah, and look, I'm just passionate about it. I'm passionate about, you know, using what I've learned in my career and I've been very privileged in the position I've been in to let other people take advantage of it themselves. I can see the system's broken. I see people are angry and I can see we're driving populism, splintering people left and right for no reason, but people are just looking to blame somebody for why they're in this mess. So we can talk all day about who's to blame or why it happened. The reality is it is. Mm -hmm. So then it's about, okay, what is the solution? And the solution is here. It's this Web3 world. It's crypto. It's digital assets. It's this is where the potential is for all of us to leave that past behind. So, yeah, I, I'm so passionate about just helping people understand what this is all about. The current technical conditions suggest that Bitcoin and Ethereum are bound for steep corrections. However, given the high volatility in the cryptocurrency market, the bearish thesis could be invalidated.
So what do you think the reason is behind the most recent slump in Bitcoin and Ethereum price? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.